Hello, this lecture will cover pages 142 through 144 of my lecture notes. Please print those pages out and have them in front of you as I present this lecture on Integrated Circuit Specifications Part C, Digital Power and Open Collector Outputs. We're going to start at the bottom of page 142. We're going to look at power and you're going to want to get your specification out on the 7400 NAND gate package. It's page 273. Keep that handy as we go through this lecture. You're going to need it. We know the power law, at least maybe you had this in physics. The power in watts is equal to the voltage times the current. That's a very important equation in electrical engineering. We can define ICC average and that's the average collector a current in these um, integrated circuits. If you know VCC goes to the collector indirectly of, of all the transistors in the IC package if you look back at the actual circuits. Um, the output totem pole for instance the upper transistor collector goes to VCC and um, the transistor stage right next to that previous to it it goes to VCC as well. So we can calculate current CC average as ICC in the high state plus, uh, plus ICC in the low state, you get these from the specs, divided by 2. So if you look at the specifications here for, for a particular package here, you can see that we have ICC in the high state and here's a typical value and here's your maximum value of 8 milliamps and then ICC low the low state typical is 12 milliamps and the max is 22 milliamps so they're coming from the specification here just divide that by 2 to get the average the average power dissipated then is VCC times that average current so these equations are very, very useful in all the integrated circuit package uh, uh, specifications. The numbers change, that's all. For instance, here's an example. It says, what is the average power dissipated for a TTL 7400 IC? Well, you can look over example A2 on page 532 in your textbook. Let's see what that says here. That's before you work this problem. I look over this example here, example A2. And if you take a look at it, basically, um, there's the problem right there. Referring to the data sheet for the 74 ALS00 quad 2 input NAND gate IC uh, figure 811, they want you to determine the maximum average power dissipation and the maximum average propagation delay of a single gate, of a single gate that is. So if you look at their solutions, and you'll have your textbook too, the average power dissipated is 10.45 milliwatts. And just divide that by 4, and you get the average power dissipated per gate is 2.6 milliwatts. And then if you take a look, we're using maximum propagation delays, and you can get the maximum propagation delay just by adding those two up and they simply in the book divide by 2 to get 9.5 nanoseconds. Again, this is the worst case maximum possible, possible average propagation delay because we're using maximum values there. Now they were referring to figure 811 and <clears throat> to get the, the values, they're pulling the values from that data sheet right there which, which is in your textbook. So you can pull everything from there, stop the video, and try to work that out and see if you can get it. Once you look over that example, I want you to work this example that I have here. What is the average dissipated power for a TTL 7400 IC? You're going to have to look in your spec sheets. And if you work this problem out, I want you to go ahead and find ICC average and power dissipated average and then find what the power average power dissipation is per gate and get answers there and see what you end up with. If you did it correctly you should end up with these values right here. 
there's my answers right there I got the 8 milliamps and the 22 milliamps from the spec sheet divided by 2 to get the average of 15 milliamps I took the maximum voltage there maybe you took 5 volts as long as you know what you're doing here but I, I figured you know I'm gonna take the maximum value there I, this is an average here so average current but I took 5.25 times 15 I get 78.75 milliwatts divided by 4 to get per gate I get 19.7 milliwatts what I'd like you to do is make sure you look over on page number 143 these examples before you try doing the homework let's take a look at these make sure you know what I'm referring to here in case you have a different version textbook uh, the first three problems, 8, 3, 8, 4, and 8, 5, are referring to this table right here. They're referring to that table. So you might want to stop the video and take a look at it briefly. It shows you the different logic families across the top, and it has their specifications. So you don't have to go through pages and pages, pages and pages of specs. But anyhow, there's problem 8.3 and the solution to 8.3. And there's problem 8.4 and the solution to problem 8.4 continuing on here problem 8.5 good problem very good problem 8.5 and you can see the remainder of that solution here on the next page and you have that textbook I'm sure these these pages and there's your 8.6 problem that's a good problem also and they're referring to table 8.7 in this problem there's the solutions here for the rest of that example 8.6 but here's table 8.7 that's what we have right there and that's where they're getting the values right there So make sure you look over example 8, 3, 8, 4, 8, 5, and 8, 6 before you tackle the homework. These are all good problems. Next thing I want to talk about is open collector outputs. Make sure you read the information on open collector outputs in the book. But here's a, a quick summary of, of what they're talking about. Um, what happens if you tie the standard outputs together? In other words, what's going to happen if you try doing this? let's say for some reason you try to take the output of an inverter and you have the output of an OR gate we'll use an OR gate, an OR gate here let's say you want to tie these two points together for some reason to run on to another circuit you can't do that you can't tie totem pole outputs together because let's take a look at what happens when you tie these together I'm gonna to put them back to back I'm gonna make it look like this just so it's I think easier to see I'm going to do something like this. There's an OR gate right there. That's that OR gate, and here's that inverter. I'm just putting them back to back. Why can't you tie those together like that? Well, this is what happens. You look on page 143 when you do that. If you try to tie them together, and let's say this output device this output device which was the inverter you want to you're trying to make it go high so you turn this transistor off and cut off and you saturate this one well this goes high and then what about this this OR gate this output of the OR gate I was talking about that we flipped around here you want it to try to make it go low and you tie these together if they're both high there's no problems but when you try to make this OR gate go low don't forget this transistor up here has to cut off and this one saturates and you get a ridiculously high current that flows down to ground and you end up blowing up this device right here and taking out this device so here's the gate A output high and this is the gate B output low so if they fight one another that can't happen again if they were both low no problem if they're both high no problem but it's, it's, it's when one goes high and one goes low either this one goes high and that one tries to go low or this one's high and this one tries to go low the current would if this was low and this was high the current would flow this way and you still burn these up TTL totem pole outputs should never be tied together 
Never. Conventional CMOS outputs should never be tied together. So how do you get around this? How can you how can you how can you bypass this somehow? Well, you can't. You, you, you need to look at something called open collector circuits. One solution to this problem is to remove the active pull-up circuits. So if you take a look at page 144, what they've done here is there's your totem pole output. Well, inside the integrated circuit, they remove this resistor, this transistor, this diode. You remove that, and you replace it with an, with an external resistor that you put in the circuit. So if we remove the act of pull-up, well, you can't do that. That's inside the package. But what you do is you get a 7400 package open collector. And that, that means that these, this is not in the circuit. These elements aren't in the circuit. So if we remove the actual pull-ups, how can we um, ever get the output to go high? How do you get this to go high? Picture this out of the circuit. How can this point go high? Because this isn't here anymore. You can drive it low, you turn that transistor on, and you can drive it low on the output. But you have to put a pull-up resistor in. You have to supply an external resistor. So that when this transistor's in cutoff, the output's a one. When this transistor's on and saturated, it's saturated, you, you pull the output low. So you can you can tie these together. For instance, look down here. Here's a 74 LS05. It's not an 04, it's a 74 LS05. 05 is an open collector hex inverter. You can look at the specs on specs 276. You can see this in your spec sheet. But these are open collector. To get those to work, you have to have a pull-up resistor. One pull-up resistor for all three of them. And it forms an AND function. We're tying these all together. It allows you to tie them together like this now because you, you, can't, you won't blow anything up here. But it, when you tie them together, it's called a wired AND. Why? Because if this is one and this is one and this is one, that's the only time you're going to get a one out here. It's called a wired AND. So what I like to do is look at that wired AND as a negative input OR. Remember De Morgan's theorem? Change the basic gate to an OR, invert the inputs, invert the outputs. Put this gate, this, this, this AND, this wired AND right here. It's not an actual gate, but it's, it functions that way. And you understand it. If this goes low, or this goes low, or this goes low, the output goes low. Well, it's the same point. The output goes low. Any one of these low takes that output low. But if they're all off, one, 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 that's the only time you get a one. That's called a wired AND circuit. And the output for this is x equal a bar and b bar and c bar. You can read about it in your textbook. But I wanted to point out one last thing here before we move on, terminate, stop this first lecture, is now you have the possibility of going with an inverter like this. And let's turn a motor on and see how we can do it. If that's an open collector, okay, we said that was a, a 74, let's see what we call it, a 74 LS. 05 open collector hex inverter no, no, and that's in your circuit you want to use that in your circuit well we could, we could put a pull-up resistor in there and we could use it so we can so we can drive this line high but what we will do is we'll put a motor in there there's a motor tie it to VCC and we're going to call this uh, turning the motor on and obviously the signature here will be on bar that has to go low to turn the motor on. I think you could see how this works. This motor is nothing more than a resistance. That's the resistance of the motor. So when this when this is low, this is high. With this being high and this being high, there's no voltage differential across here. Current can't flow. The motor doesn't come on. When this goes to a one, high active, this goes to a low, it's low active, and you get current flow. sinking current and that motor turns on so you don't always have to put an external pull-up resistor in when you're using open collector circuits sometimes you, sometimes you can actually put in the device you want to use because it is it does look like a resistor 
open collector circuits you can tie the outputs together but you cannot tie TTL standard circuits outputs together can't do that and that concludes the lecture